Hello everybody and welcome to another Blackbird audiobook. This is going to be the last story, Hide and Seek. I am so excited for this one. Uh, it seems to be a lot shorter than the other two, uh, which I really enjoyed by the way. If you want to watch them, then you can. They will all be um, on my channel. Uh, and there will be a playlist for all of my pl uh, all my audiobooks that I've done. Uh, I'm really excited for this one. I've heard it's got um, some lore significance, which is what I look for in these stories. Uh, but mostly I, I just sit here and enjoy them. Um, saying that, uh, I, I already have seen something that could mean something. Um, everyone knows uh, The Cliffs is coming out uh, in a few days, actually. Um, and I'm really excited to start reading that, got, that for you guys. Uh, but I do see um, the surname Billings, which was actually in the word cloud for the most words used in the cliffs. So that could draw a connection. Anyway, I have no idea what this story is going to be about, apart from hide and seek. If you do enjoy, then please do give this video a like and make sure you subscribe for my audiobooks on the cliffs when it comes out. Anyway, I think we are very overdue to begin. <laughs> Toby, Toby, Toby. Kids chanted as Toby Billings hunched over the ultimate battle warrior arcade game at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza and Games. His left hand clenched the joystick tightly, shifting left and right, up and down. His right hand punched the action buttons for his warrior character to bust the graveyard ghoul opponent in the face and bust the graveyard ghoul opponent in the face. Wait, never mind, I read the same line twice. Let's start again. His right hand punched the action buttons for his warrior character to bust the graveyard ghoul opponent in the face and kick him in the gut. There we go. Uh, I will say just before we carry on, um, this is my first reaction, obviously, like every other audiobook I've done. This is my first reaction for this story. Repeatedly, black blood and green sweat splattered from the ghoul. It was freaking awesome. Sweat dampened Toby's upper lip. He shifted the peppermint-flavoured toothpick inside his mouth from one cheek to the other. His arm muscles clenched tightly. He was about to achieve his highest game score for Ultimate Battle Warrior. All he wanted was to be the new highest scorer. He'd been focused on the game all week and he was almost there. Almost. He pounded, pounded, pounded on his opponent. Bam! Took that sucker down. Winner flashed across the screen. Toby pushed off the game, raised his arms in victory. Heck yeah. Someone patted his back. All right, Toby. Take that sucker. Toby punched the air, grinning. You had to take first place this time, Toby. Toby expelled a breath, cracked his knuckles, then took a moment to enter his tab initials. Tapping his foot as he waited for the top scores to flash on the screen, his smile fell away as he blinked in disbelief. No freaking way. He still held second place. Defeat sunk like a rock in his gut. Oh, nah. Your bro is still the highest score. What a drag. Toby's hands clenched on the controls. Sure enough, his older brother, Connor in Connor's initials, C-O-B, was still listed as number one. Always number one. Jaw tight, he slammed his palms hard on the game. Dang it! Kids started to walk away except for this annoying guy called Reggie. Don't worry about it, Reggie said, slurping a milkshake. His hair was a mess of red curls, flaring out like a halo above his head. You'll get a game over him eventually. You're just 1,000 points behind. That's practically nothing. Toby curled his lip. Every game in Freddy Fazbear's Pizza and Games had his brother listed as the top player. He thought he had this one, for sure. He cracked his knuckles and turned away from the stupid game. Then he grabbed his soda cup from the small table next to him and sipped flat root beer through the straw. There's still hide and seek, Reggie went on. It just opened up a week ago and your brother hasn't even played that one yet. I mean, I haven't seen him anyway. And you still have to play it. When you do, you'll have the advantage, no problem. No. He hadn't told his brother a new game attraction had opened at Freddy's just for that exact reason. Toby wanted to play at first and snag the top spot. His brother used to have a part-time job at Freddy's when he was in high school. He'd spent the, his breaks and after work hours playing all the arcade games in the place until he'd become the top scorer on every single game. Now that he'd graduated last year and moved on to 
in his words, a real job. Toby had taken over his old job, helping out with cleaning around the family restaurant. Man, he wanted to beat his brother at a game just once. Was that too much to ask? Toby adjusted, adjusted the beanie on his head. Yeah, I guess. He'd been watching the long lines die down on the new game, waiting for all the dumb little kids to finish playing. It was a half hour before his shift started, and he had some time to play around to get a feel for the game. Later, he muttered to Reggie. Go get him, Toby! The, the kid yelled, then followed with some annoying howling noise. That dude was such a weirdo. Toby heard bowling balls crash into pins from the small bowling alley as he walked through the crowd in the arcade area. Voices and game sounds melded together, echoing in his ears. They were all sounds he'd grown accustomed to in the, in the six months he'd worked at the restaurant. He smelled buttery popcorn, cotton candy, and, of course, pizza, with the occasional stink bomb that came from being close to a bunch of sweaty kids. He walked past Laser Tag and the prize store, and finally stopped at the door of the new game attraction, Hide and Seek. A black-shadowed Bonnie the Rabbit stood beside the logo. Come find me if you can, it was printed under the title of the game. Toby slipped in his tokens, and the game door unlocked. He walked through the doorway, examining the details of the game as an instrumental beat played through the speakers. Inside, the room was sectioned off in parts of a town, with a railing that glided up and down the wall and ended behind board cutouts. There was a park that led to a store, a school, a police station, and of course, a pizza place. Each section had about three board cutouts that Bonnie could hide behind. There was a thin barricade posted around the wall so kids wouldn't mess with the game. The rules flashed above on a large screen hang hanging from the ceiling. Interesting. This reminds me of both, well, obviously Shadow Bonnie. I, I hope we get some lore, some lore on Shadow Bonnie, some insight on what Shadow Bonnie really is. Um, and also the, oh, what's it called? The maze in um, Curse of Dreadbear. It reminds me of that. I've completely forgotten what it's called. The, the corn maze, something like that. It's the corn maze. Um, that one with the with the cutouts and and you poke your head through while uh, Grim Foxy comes running at you. Anyway, that that's just what it reminds me of. I'm just making connections here. The rules are simple. Find where Bonnie is hiding in three tries in under three minutes, or lose the game. Welcome to Hide and Seek. Enter your name to try and find Bonnie, and let's begin. A deep voice, oh, I thought it was a high voice. <laughs> deep voice bellowed out of a wall speaker. Toby cracked his knuckles. No problem, he murmured. He typed in his name as the current player. You're mine, rabbit. Here we go, Toby. A black, two-dimensional cutout of Bonnie glided along the railing on the wall. The room darkened to pitch black. Toby heard the quiet sound of Bonnie moving along the railing of the room. Three... Two, one, the lights flashed back on. The lights flashed back on. I don't think that's supposed to be printed twice. I think there's some formatting issues, sorry. Uh, Toby blinked. Bonnie was nowhere to be seen. He pulled the toothpick from his mouth and rolled it between his fingers. He bit his bottom lip as he assessed the hiding places. He could go anywhere in the game by hitting a button to see where Bonnie might be hiding. He put the toothpick back in his mouth and moved to the police station to hit the button at the desk. Sorry, no Bonnie here. Toby scanned around the room, rubbing his chin. Had to be the pizza place. He walked over and hit the button for the kitchen doors. Sorry, no Bonnie here. One more try. He moved to hit the button for the principal's office at the school. Uh-oh, you lose. Bonnie glided out of a jail cell at the police station. Better luck next time, Toby. Toby curled his lip. Not much to the game, but he still wanted to win. He looked up at the screen hanging from the ceiling. Somebody already snagged the top score by being the fastest time. Tom at 2.58. That's nothing. Toby turned when he heard the door lock, uh, door unlock behind him. Welcome to hide and seek. Enter your name and try to find Bonnie. And let's begin. A little kid walked in, sporting a Freddy Fazbear party hat. Hey, it's my turn now, he said, his bottom lip sti sticking out. Toby dug out more tokens and slapped them in the kid's hand. He grabbed the kid's shoulder, shoving him back out the door. I still got one more turn, he told him. Hey, no fair, it's my turn. Stop your whining, I'll be out in a minute. Toby slammed the door on the kid and went to type in his name again. 
Here we go, Toby. Bonnie glided out. The room blackened and the countdown began. He heard Bonnie move quietly. As soon as the lights flashed on, Toby ran to the store and per um, pushed the bakery counter. Sorry, no Bonnie here. He ran to the park and chose a tree. Sorry, no Bonnie here. Toby gritted his teeth and ran to the pizza place, pounding his palm on the arcade. Uh-oh, you lose. <laughs> Bonnie glided out of the bushes at the park. Better luck next time, Toby. Toby spit out his toothpick on the floor as annoyance burned in his gut. He fisted his hands and stormed out the exit to start his shift. Stupid game. Toby walked into his house after work. He heard the television playing and he rolled his eyes. That meant Connor was home. Great. Dad worked the graveyard shift at a warehouse and wasn't home most nights, so usually it was just him and his brother. Toby plopped a box of leftover pepper um, of leftover pizza on the kitchen table, then dug out a piece of pepperoni. He was already irritated because he'd played hide and seek a few more times before he came home and still and still hadn't found the rabbit. The game wasn't that complicated. How hard could it be to find a hidden rabbit? What you, Tobes? Connor called out. Who else would it be? Oh, I, I read it. What you? It's it's that you. <laughs> that you, Tobes? Connor called out. Who else would it be? Toby walked to the front room and leaned against the wall. Yeah. Um, Connor was kicked back in Dad's recliner watching baseball. He wore a dirty button-up shirt stained with black grease. Grease was smeared on his cheeks and arms. Only his hands were somewhat cleaner, with black oil under his nails. Connor turned to look at Toby and grinned. Beat me at any games? Beat me at any games yet, little brother? Connor wanted to know. Uh, gee, how did he know he'd ask? Toby bit into his pizza and chewed. Nope. Connor laughed. Didn't think so. Not gonna happen, ever. But it's flattering that you keep trying. Toby narrowed his eyes. Oh, it will happen. Connor lifted his eyebrows. Maybe when pigs fly, sucker. Toby crossed his arms against his chest. He wanted to tell Connor, somebody else already had the first score on a new game at the pizza place, but he bit his lip. Nah, he just wanted to get the lead score first, and he didn't want his brother anywhere near Freddy's until Toby held first place. Toby pointed at him with his pizza slice. Pigs will be flying. You'll see, and you'll be the sucker, and I'll be the winner. Oh, please. Then you won't even know what to do with yourself except go cry in your room. Connor wasn't deterred. He leaned forward in the recliner. Oh, you mean like that time you beat my overall ho home runs during Little League? Or how about all those times you smashed me at bowling? Toby scowled. Just shut up, Connor. Oh, I know. You must mean your overall time for the mile run in PE class. You're such a real speedster, aren't you, Tobes? Toby pushed off the wall. I said, shut up. Connor's eyes widened. Oh, wait, you've never beaten me in anything. And you never will because you're the pitiful loser who can't win at anything. Toby saw red. He threw his pizza at his brother. Connor smiled in glee as he dodged the slice. And Toby launched himself at Connor in the recliner. He had a moment of satisfaction when he first hit his brother's gut. Connor grunted. Oh, you're going to pay for that, Connor hissed out. Fist flew. Toby was lifted, tossed on the floor. He hit the carpet. Breath rushed out of his mouth. His brother clocked him in the chin, then manoeuvred him into a strong arm around his neck. Toby's face heated. He was losing air. He trapped his brother's arm. His brother released him and shoved him to the side while Toby coughed. Shoulders heaving, Connor pointed a finger down at him. I always beat you at everything, idiot. When are you ever going to get that through your thick head? I will always win, and you will always lose like the loser you were born to be. Connor left the room, leaving Toby on the floor. Toby just lay sprawl sprawled on the floor, breathing hard, staring at the ceiling. Man, Connor is a, <laughs> he's a speedrunner, he's a, he's a dream, he's a, he's, a, he's such a dream. I bet it's revealed that Connor cheated. <laughs> uh, he found a cheat code. The next day, Toby studied the block of wood in the woodshop class, rubbing his chin with his forefinger. Buzz saws and drills sounded around him. The scent of freshly cut wood filled his nostrils. He was supposed to be working on a small cutting board project, but he had other ideas at the moment, like making rail blocks for hide and seek so that a rabbit can hide in some of the areas in the game. Yeah, it was cheating. He just didn't care. For once, he wanted to shove a winning score right in his brother's face. He felt tension grip his body inch by inch, just thinking about Connor. 
uh, how he always had to be number one at everything he did. How he always had to rub it in Toby's face. Well, he wasn't going to be a loser this time if it was the last thing he did. Everything had been a big competition with Connor as far back as Toby could remember. Connor always had to have the best score, the best grades, the biggest piece of cake. He had to be stronger than Toby in arm wrestling, beat him at boxing, and win one-on-one -on -one in basketball. He had to get the most attention from Dad and Mum when she'd been around. He'd been a star quarterback his junior varsity season until he'd banged up his knee and couldn't play well enough afterward. That had really messed up with his brother's head. Uh, Toby remembered him moping around the house for months. Toby had even felt bad for him for a little while, until Connor had gotten a job at Freddy's and went on an arcade game mission, defeating every high score in the place. He'd been obnoxious and unbearable ever since then. Now that Toby worked there, Connor held the ultimate victory arc uh, the ultimate arcade victory over Toby nearly every day. It drove Toby freaking crazy. That was why Connor's reign was finally coming to an end. Determined, Toby got to work on the block of wood, cutting out squares that would soon be the perfect rail blocks for hide and seek. Mr. Pedrick walked by Toby's workstation. He adjusted his glasses and looked at Toby cutting out blocks. Those are too small for a cutting board, Toby. Yeah, I know. I'm getting to the cutting board next. Mr. Pedrick crossed his arms. The cutting board is your assignment now. It's due at the end of the period. How are you going to get it done in 30 minutes? You're a good kid, Toby. I know you can do better than this if you just try and put some effort into your projects. I'm starting the project right now. Irritated, Toby walked over to the wood table and picked up another piece of wood for the cutting board. When Mr. Pedrick walked away, he set the new piece of wood aside and continued with the rail blocks. Some things were more important and took priority over schoolwork, like beating an annoying, ignorant, loud-mouthed brother. After Freddy Fazbear's Pizza and games closed that night, Toby inserted his coin coins for a new round of hide-and-seek. There were only a couple of employees left cleaning up in the kitchen and he'd snuck inside the game room near the end of his shift. The game voice welcomed him to the game. Before Toby entered his name, he walked over to a small barricaded fin fence that blocked the wall from players getting too close to the game and hopped over. From his sweatshirt, he dug out the small wooden blocks that he'd shaped to fit in the railing. He gave the blocks a good pound with his hand, wedging each wood piece into the rails to cut off access to the pool, uh, sorry, to the school, police station and the pizza place. Now the only places the rabbit could hide were the park and the store, which were right next to each other. Toby smiled and nodded. Now he would definitely win, and he'd get his name listed as first place. Oh yeah, let's do this. <laughs> he couldn't wait to rub Connor's face in his win. He could see his brother now. His, set, his face would get all red, just like it did whenever something didn't go his way, and he'd stormed off and hit a wall in the house like a big baby. Dad would yell at him to go up, cool off, and then Dad would t look at Toby and roll his eyes. Toby snickered. It would be priceless. Toby hopped back over the small fence and ran to enter his name into the game. Here we go, Toby. Yeah, here we go, rabbit. Bonnie glided out. The room blackened. Three. Toby tapped his foot as he waited for the lights to turn on. Two. One. As, the, as soon as the room brightened, he sprinted to the park and slapped on the side, slide. Sorry, no Bonnie here. He hit the tree. Sorry, no Bonnie here. Rattled, he hit the deli at the store. Uh-oh, you lose. Toby's jaw dropped in disbelief. His peppermint-flavoured toothpick fell to the floor. No freaking way. Bonnie glided from behind the cashier register at the store. Better luck next time, Toby. Toby's hands fisted as he growled loudly in frustration. You think you're funny, don't you, Rabbit? You think I'm a loser? Well, I'm not, you idiot. You are the loser. You'll see. He paced back and forth and tore the beanie from his head. His entire body vibrated with tension. I am not going to lose another game to you. He rubbed his hands over his red head. Eh, he rubbed his hands over his head. Think, think. He wanted to win. He needed to win. Suddenly, he whirled as a quick solution crossed his mind. Yes! He rushed out of the game room. A minute later, he inserted his tokens and came back in, carrying two metal chairs. He already had the store, the school, and pizza place covered. He wedged the back of the chairs into the railing to the park and the store. The bottom of the chairs leaned forward on the small fence. Welcome to hide and seek. Enter your name to try and find Bonnie and let's begin.
Yeah, yeah, he muttered. Toby stood back, hands on his hips, looking at his handiwork. Everywhere was blocked. There was no way the rabbit could even hide at all. Ha! <laughs> Got you now, sucker. Who's the winner now? He rubbed his damp palms together as he rushed to input his name. He felt a sheen of sweat on his forehead and wiped it with the back of his hand. He felt jittery. Off. Like he couldn't keep still. He rolled his neck in a circular motion and cracked his knuckles. Here we go, Toby. The voice sang out. Bonnie glided out. The room blackened. Three. Toby's stomach took a sudden dive and his head went light. He almost felt like puking. Two. For one moment, a rush of quiet seemed to fill the room, as if all the air was sucked out of the area and his ears were about to pop. He felt a strange tickle at, the, at his back and shifted a shoulder to make it go away. Then all at once, sound rushed back into his ears. One. The lights flashed on. Toby blinked. He felt disoriented. Disoriented. Oh my god, I can't speak. <laughs> he felt disorientated. There we go. He rubbed his eyes and scanned the walls before him. Wait. Bonnie was gone. Toby's head swiveled left and right, even to the ceiling. There was no way the rabbit should be able to hide anywhere. What the heck? Where'd you go? He rushed to the small fence barricade and hopped over to the billboard cutouts, trying to peer inside the slight gap between the cutouts on the wall. The slots were empty. No, this wasn't right. His stomach his stomach was turning and his chest felt tight. Oh my gosh, this is annoying me that I can't speak. <laughs> he can <t> <laughs> He continued to run to each cutout, peering behind the wooden displays. There was nowhere the rabbit could have gone. This didn't make any sense. Toby's heartbeat felt like a drum. Uh, a bead of sweat dripped down the side of his head. No, no, no. This wasn't fair. The stupid rabbit couldn't win. Heat flashed across his face. A burst of helplessness, energy, flared throughout his body. His breaths increased. He wasn't a loser. He wasn't a freaking loser. He ran to the chair he'd propped against the railing, picked it up and heaved it across the room. It smashed against a wall, denting a hole into the game's pizza place. He pulled out, he pulled at one part of the fence and tore it down. He stomped towards the broken barrier and stalked over to the other chair and threw it against the other wall. Uh, wall. He pulled down another section of the fencing, reached for the tree cut out at the park, and gritting his teeth, he pulled at it with all of his strength. It ripped off the wall as he crashed into the floor. Only a few pegs stuck out in its place. He threw the tree, got back to his feet, and ran to the police station, uh, tearing at the desk cut out. I always beat you at everything, idiot. When are you going to get through that, th that through your thick head? I will always win, and you will always lose like the loser you were born to be. He tugged and tore at everything he could get his hands on. He wasn't sure how long he went at it, tearing down, destroying. All he knew was that he had to be rid of this helpless feeling within him. This feeling of being weak and powerless. This pain that always seemed to be inside of him. He hated it. He needed it out. Gone. Finally, his body grew tired as he tripped on a piece of a cutout and fell on his ass. His sweat, uh, sweat? His chest was heaving up and down. Sweat covered his face. His hands were red and throbbing. He looked around at what he'd done and satisfaction filled him. Yeah, take that, he thought. He'd pretty much destroyed hide and seek. As he stared at the destruction, reality crashed down on him. He swallowed past the dryness in his throat. He scrubbed at his face with his hands, then continued to stare at the mess he'd created. He'd ruined a game that wasn't his. He was going to get in so much trouble. Frantic, he stood and grabbed the tree he'd torn from the wall. He quickly tried to reattach it to the pegs, but it was no use. It just crashed back to the floor. What did I do? He whispered. Then he did the only thing he could do. He ran out of the room. Toby opened his eyes, blinked. He was in the dark. He was lying face down on a cold metal table. Where was he? Bright lights flashed on above him and he squinted. He tried to sit up, but his hands were tied above his head. His legs were bound at his ankles and he couldn't move them. What the heck? Toby tried to lift his head a little. Hey, what's going on? Connor, are you messing with me? His voice seemed to echo inside the room. He looked around to see brick walls surrounding him. You're going to get busted for doing this. Someone shifted behind him. When no one answered, panic set in. Connor would have been blabbing his mouth by now. Hey, whoever you are, you better let me go. He jerked at his hands, but the rope just bit into his wrists. 
rubbing his skin raw. His heartbeats seemed to pound against the cold table beneath him. Then he spotted something dark in his peripheral vision. What do you want? He felt his shirt tugged from his back, then heard scissors cutting at it. Stop it! Leave me alone! Cold air hit his skin. He heard more movement, then something small bit into his back, like a needle. Ow! Don't touch me! The needle was pulled out, and then he felt his skin being tugged. What the heck are you doing to me? He jerked his head left and right, trying to see what was happening. Sweat pearled on his forehead. Again, he felt the needle push into his skin and then pull. Blood dripped down his back as the pain grew in intensity. Stop! You're hurting me! Please! I said stop! But whoever the dark figure was, he didn't speak and he didn't stop. Toby felt every prick and pull of the needle as realisation dawned. Someone was sewing something to his back. Oh my god. Someone help me! He screamed. Please! Toby jerked awake. He sat up in his bed, alert, heart pounding, breathing fast. He was disoriented. Uh, oh my gosh, I can't say that word. <laughs> he was disoriented. Oh no, he was, no, he was disoriented. Oh, oh. <laughs> it was just a bad dream. The sunlight slanted through his window blinds. He was okay. He was home. What day was it? Was it time to go to school? Did he oversleep? He glanced at his alarm clock, 7.55am. He didn't set his alarm because it was Saturday, right? He rubbed his face, then glanced at the mirror mounted on his dresser across from his bed. His face was pale, and there was dark circles under his eyes. His brown hair stuck up in a crazy direction. He spotted his shadow on the wall behind him, and felt a ticklish feeling in his back. A shadow? Frowning, he tilted his head as he looked at it in the reflection of the mirror. That didn't seem right. There wasn't enough light from the window blinds for, for him to see his own shadow in his room. He shifted and leaned to his right. A second later, the shadow followed. Toby's eyes widened. Did his own shadow just delay in following him? It's like Peter Pan. Uh, he leaned quickly to the left, but this time, the shadow moved quickly. He shook his head. Weird. He probably wasn't fully awake yet. Toby yawned and scratched his chest, then stretched his arms over his head. The shadow followed along. Then he winced. His body was sore. Guilt from last night came crashing back. Dan, why did we have to mess up? Why did we have to mess up the game like that? What was Dan, his boss, going to say? Was he going to get caught? When he put his arms down, the shadow's arms were still up. Toby sucked in a breath and jumped from his bed. Looking at the wall behind his bed, he saw nothing, no shadow. He whipped his head towards the mirror and saw the shadow behind him. A chill radiated down his spine. He stepped closer to the large mirror on his dresser, watching as the shadow followed closely behind. The closer he got, the dark shadow followed. He peered into the mirror, and his mouth went dry. The shadow had rabbit ears. Ooh, okay. Toby spun around as if he could somehow catch the shadow, but every time he turned, there was nothing behind him. It was as if it could. It, it was as if it would suddenly duck and hide somewhere in his room. Toby went to his bed and peered underneath, just a bunch of dust and junk. He went to his closet and saw more junk, but even that didn't make sense. He glanced back in the mirror, and his shadow was still behind him. The only rabbit he could even think of was Bonnie the rabbit from the game Hide and Seek. Toby froze for a moment, trying to comprehend what was actually happening. A rabbit's shadow from a game attached to his back. He frowned. Wait, this couldn't be real. Suddenly, relief seeped through him. He slapped a hand to his forehead and barked out a laugh. I'm still dreaming. Duh. There was no way he could actually be seeing a shadow in the shape of a rabbit. This was some nightmare he was having because he was afraid he'd get caught for breaking the dumb game. Everything was fine, he'd assured himself. He yawned again and decided to go back to bed. When he would really wake up again, the only shadow he would see would be his own. He climbed back into bed and got underneath the covers. He looked once more into the mirror, seeing the shadow hovering behind him. Toby waved, and then the shadow waved with him. He lay down and closed his eyes, drifting off to sleep. Toby blink, uh, blinked awake. His eyes were blurry. He rubbed his eyes and yawned, stretching his sore body. Even though he'd slept in, he felt exhausted. He sat up in bed, glancing into the dresser mirror. The shadow was still there. Fear punched his chest, and he pushed back against the wall, kicking the covers off of him. He sprang out of bed, hunched down, staring at the mirror. The shadow lurked just at his back. 
Toby reached behind him as if he could feel the shadow, but he only grabbed air. He swallowed hard as he stood straight, and the shadow did the same. He turned to his side to see if he could see the shadow closely, but for some reason the shadow stayed just behind him. Who are you? he asked the shadow. What do you want? 